Hello everyone, welcome to the downtown Seattle waterfront. I am here today to introduce you to two types of equipment that are really frequently used by oceanographers and marine biologists. I'm going to start with the Niskin bottle. So the Niskin bottle's purpose is to capture a sample of water from a specific depth. So if you look at the bottle, you can see that the main bottle itself is just a hollow tube. It's just a piece of plastic, but inside you can see that latex tubing, which connects two stoppers, one at one end and one at the other end. Um, the instrument is also connected to a line and the line is marked every meter with these black marks. So there's one meter of line, here's, two meters of line. And then on the other end, we have a weight. And the purpose of this weight is to make sure that when we put this bottle in the water, it goes straight down. Because if it goes off to the side, then when we think the bottle's at five meters, it's not gonna actually be at five meters. So we have that weight to make sure it goes straight down. On the top here, we have an air vent, and I'm gonna make sure that's closed before we deploy the bottle. And then at this end is a drain, and we wanna make sure that that is closed as well. Okay, before I send this down, I wanna show you how it closes. So when we send the bottle into the water, the water is going to flow through that tube until we actually close it. So when I close it, so it's good, I'm gonna lower it down on the line. And when it gets to five meters, I'm going to send down the messenger, which is this heavy weight here. And as the messenger falls down the line, it will get to this spring loaded rod. It's going to hit this plunger and close the bottle. And when it closes, it's gonna trap the water that we want, and then we'll be able to pull it up and drain it out, and then measure whatever we want to measure. All right, let's open it back up, and then we'll set it down. Since I just showed you how the bottle closes, I'm gonna have to reopen it before I send it into the water. To do that, I'm gonna pull out the top stopper, and the lanyard on the stopper connects to this pin. The bottom stopper also has a lanyard that hooks to the first one. So now the bottle is open and we are ready to deploy it. I'm gonna send it down to five meters. Okay, so now it's right at the surface. So if we wanted a sample of surface seawater, we could close it now, but we're gonna go down to five meters. So I'm gonna lower it down. There's the first mark right at the water surface. So now it's at one meter. There's two, three, four, five meters, depending on the waves. So now I want to send down my messenger to close the bottle. Okay, I can feel it close, so now I can bring it back up. So I, my bottle is full. I have about five liters of seawater from five meters depth. And now we wanna get the seawater out so that we can sample it or measure it. So there's a drain, this drain at the bottom. I'm going to line up the outer part here. There's a little tiny hole in it. And that hole lines up with this silver pin and then I can push it in to get the seawater out, but you notice that the water stops flowing almost immediately because I need to open that air vent at the top. So as soon as I open that up, the water is gonna come out and I can collect that into a bottle or a beaker. 
and now I can measure or sample the seawater. This piece of equipment is the plankton net and the purpose of this net is to catch drifting organisms which we call plankton. The plankton net has a couple things in common with the Niskin bottle. At one end the net is attached to a line although this line we only have marked at one location. This is the 10 meter mark. At the opposite end there is also a weight attached to this instrument and the purpose is the same. That is to make sure that the net sinks straight down vertically into the water rather than drifting off to the side or not sinking at all. This is a very lightweight instrument and if it didn't have a weight it probably would just float at the surface. This end that the weight is attached to is called the cod end and it gets that name because this net is very similar in many ways to fishing nets. The main body of the net is a fabric and the fabric of this net is very smooth and soft. That's because this net has a very small mesh size. So we have it written here on the cod end. This mesh is 80 micrometers or 80 microns. That's a pretty small mesh size, and that means that this net is really tailored to catching small phytoplankton, although of course it will catch anything larger that um, comes into the net as well. But if we wanted to catch larger organisms, it would be better to have a larger mesh size. Okay, these nets can be deployed in a couple ways. What we're gonna do is just send this net vertically down into the water and then pull it straight back up and as we pull it up it's going to filter through the seawater and we'll collect all the plankton in that column. We could also do a horizontal tow um, so I could just throw this in the water and then walk back and forth down the dock if I just wanted to collect something right at the surface. Um, we could also tow this behind a kayak or throw it off the back of a ship and tow it from a ship. Hey, get that plankton right out there, that large plankton. How cool is that? Okay, let's send the net down. So I'm just gonna put it in the water. And you can see that that weight is pulling it down. It is pretty low today, so we may not even have 10 meters of water underneath the pier. Okay, there's the 10 meter mark. So we'll just stop the net there, and then I'm going to go ahead and pull it back in. While I do, I'm going to wind up the line. Now we've got a plankton sample, but you can see because the plankton is so dense in the water right now, all of this material, this brownish material, is plankton. And if we were wanting to be really careful about measuring the density of organisms, we would want to make sure that everything from this net gets washed into the bottom. So I filled up this bottle, this squirt bottle, with some seawater, and I'm just going to spray it to get all of those organisms down here into the cod end. And once that's done, we just unscrew the cod end. And there is our sample.
So it looks like right now we have at least one type of diatom blooming, which is why the water is so brown. Now we can take this back to a microscope and take a closer look to see exactly what's blooming.